Hey, what's going on everyone? Appreciate y'all coming here and checking out this Bendy in the Dark Revival video. In this one, I'm going to be showing y'all 20 different things that you probably didn't know about in the game. Hope you all find this enjoyable and you learn something new from it. If you do find it enjoyable, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like on this. The support is greatly appreciated. This took a while to compile together. But as always, that's totally up to you if you want to take the time to support it or not. Just leaving a reminder here in the beginning. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into all of these. Enjoy. There you go, little guy. And only 800 more frames to go. No way I'm getting through tonight without some coffee. Probably some downstairs. The first thing that you might have not known is the secret ending that you can get in the very beginning of the game. Instead of standing up from the desk in the beginning, if you wait like 20 minutes, yeah, you gotta wait a while, you'll actually trigger a secret ending with some hidden dialogue too from Audrey. I'll go ahead and skip waiting 20 minutes here and cut right to the chase. Check this out, here's what happens if you don't stand up after a while. Well, the coffee's good and all, but this work's gotta get done. Focus, Audrey, focus. So yeah, that's a way to beat the game extremely quick. But yeah, if you trigger this secret scene and end the game, you also get the Avid Worker achievement, too. So, yeah, something pretty neat. Anyways, next thing that I wanted to show you all that you might have missed is this picture that's signed by Henry Stein above Audrey's desk. As you can see, it states on a congratulations on your success, your best pal, Henry Stein. And the crazy thing is about this framed picture here is that it's the same one that we see inside of Joey Drew's apartment at the end of Bendy and the Ink Machine after the credits. This scene will appear and it'll end on this same picture that we see in Audrey's workplace here in the beginning of Bendy and the Dark Revival. Also, there's some interesting dialogue that happens here too at the end when looking at this picture. Listen into this. Tell me another one, Uncle Joey. So as you heard there in the end, a girl said, tell me another one, Uncle Joey. So this seems to mean Audrey's dad, Joey Drew, has a niece. Pretty interesting. And for those of you that don't know who Henry Stein is, the guy who signed the picture, he is Joey Drew's old friend and ex-business partner. He's the guy who helped start up all of this. He's responsible for the creation of various cartoon characters, including Bendy, Boris the Wolf, and Alice Angel, the characters you see on the picture. So... Yeah, that's who he is. Anyways, that's enough with this one. Let's go ahead and move on to this next thing I want to show y'all. Something else interesting you could find in the very beginning that you probably didn't know is how you can interact with this mirror. And the neat thing about interacting with this mirror is if you continue doing it, you'll eventually trigger a secret jump scare that'll pop up out of nowhere in the mirror. Check this out. Be warned, a jump scare is going to happen. Yeah, pretty crazy. And once the jump scare happens, we can't interact with the mirror anymore. Pretty neat, though. Anyways, carrying on. Anyways, this next thing that I want to show you will also be in the beginning that I think players might have missed. And that is Nathan Arch's picture right here. Here we get a glimpse of Nathan Arch which is the creator, which is the owner of the Archgate Films, and the father of Wilson Arch, the janitor that's here. Wilson does talk about his dad, and this is what his dad looked like. I'll go ahead and play a clip over Wilson talking about his dad, Nathan. Without spoiling too much, I'm not going to say exactly where this scene is at, but eventually you will encounter this scene in the game. Check this out. My father is beyond hope. Perhaps you know him, Nathan Arch, owner of Archgate, industrial genius, business tycoon. For years I've lived in his reaching shadow. He always had time for the grand creatives of the world, the doers, as he called them. He knew only the best, the biggest thinkers. How could his lowly son ever hope to compete with that? But now... So, yeah, those were his thoughts over his dad. And as you heard, Nathan Arch is who his father is. All right, so this next thing that I want to show y'all will be a little further along from this. Um, we'll just have to unlock this door to head into this hallway. So we'll have to figure out that, you know, this door is locked and then go back and get our key and unlock this door. 
but at this part we can actually trigger a little secret. As you saw that mop and bucket move by itself, well there's a reason why it was moving by itself. Turns out there's a living sock puppet or something that's inside the bucket of water. And how we can trigger this sock puppet to come out of the bucket is by finding these three stress balls that are around in this vicinity. So as you can see, we can find one inside this room here. However, at the moment we can't pick it up. Um, we will actually have to go over to the elevator first and press the button and then backtrack to the room. As you can see now, we can officially pick up this ball that's on this table. I think they're stress balls. Um, anyways, there's another one that will be located over here next to this desk on the ground, as you can see. So pick up that one. And the final one that we'll need will be located in the room that we started out at. It will be located on our desk. So, yeah, let's go ahead and pick up that one now. Once we got all three of the balls, we'll then just have to head back to that bucket and mop that just randomly moved out of nowhere in this hallway. And check this out now, if we go to interact with the bucket. Yeah, we'll be able to throw the balls into it. Whoa! <laughs> Such a goofy little secret that players could have easily missed. But yeah, consider leaving a like, by the way, if, if any of these are new to you and you find this kind of video enjoyable. Anyways, carrying on now, let's go ahead and head down the elevator. Alright, so now at this part, there might have been some things that you might have missed here. Like, for example, right here, it talks about who Joey Drew was and how he passed away at the age of 70. As you can see here, Joey Drew was the founder of the studio and the man who created Bendy, one of the most beloved cartoon characters of all time. In 1929, with the help of his business partner, Henry Stein, he created Bendy's first short, Little Devil Darling, as an early talky cartoon. As his entertainment legacy grew over the years, Joey's optimism and pioneering spirit never wavered. Starting with just a pencil and a dream, he created this studio here at Archgate Pictures. We strive to continue his dream and see Bendy live on. Dreams come true. So yeah, this is kind of like a brief explanation over who Joey Drew was, in case some players might have not known. This could have been something easily missed if players didn't take the time to just, you know, sit here and read this. But anyway, speaking of Joey Drew, something else that you might have missed within this part are all of the pictures that you can find around here at the studio. As you can see, there he is with his pencil, drawing up some sketches. And over here, we could find them talking about an idea that they have. And we could find more of the creators drawing the cartoons. The cartoon. Pretty neat. You can actually just see them in the studio working here. You don't see these pictures anywhere else in the game. You can only find these here in the beginning. Anyways, lastly at this part, I wanted to show you all another thing that you might have missed, and that is over here. This writing here that is framed in state Silly Vision. As you can see it reads, Silly Vision is a cartoon format developed by Joey Drew that allowed for animated cartoons to be completed more efficiently by streamlining the pencil and inking stages and allowing for last minute adjustments to be made directly on the film stock itself. The film was chemically coated to allow for a specially formulated ink to be applied by an artist working on a magnifying table. This allowed for adjustments, action enhancements, or even whole new characters to be added after the cartoon had been photographed. Mr. Drew intended for the format to be used someday to create interactive experiences where the cartoons could be custom altered to fit the occasion or audience. So yeah, pretty interesting and explains a little bit of what we're actually seeing in Bendy's world. So for this next thing that I wanted to show y'all, won't be too far in the game. Once you get through this door here that states don't knock on it and then solve the screening room puzzle here, the next room you can go into is the writer's room. And there's something completely optional that you can do here, and that is check out a little introduction to the fourth member of the Butcher Gang, which the introduction is through this door here. Now you can completely skip this. As you can see, I'll go ahead and show you all real quick. I can just run right through these doors 
and carry on with the story. However, if you want, you can learn about the fourth member of the Butcher Gang, which this is a completely new enemy that we can come across in Bendy in the Dark Revival. You can see the three original Butcher Gang members right outside of the room where you learn about the fourth member. As you can see, when you enter into this room here, you'll find writing on the wall that states she was the fourth, and right underneath this writing, you can find an audio log. Listen into this. So, yeah, that's a little bit of her backstory. Anyways, also inside this room, if you go up to this crate here, you can inspect it. And here's what happens when you do. So, yeah, there's a little jump scare that happens with the fourth member. Here's what the thing looks like up close and personal. Now, when you go to turn around and then look back at the crate, you will find out that the thing has disappeared, which is how the fourth member works. It's a ghost that will just randomly appear. And when you go to head the way that you're supposed to go to continue on with the story and open up the door, here's what will happen. The fourth member will come out of nowhere swinging at you. And also, now this door is locked. You can't go through it. I mean, you could have before by just skipping past this part, but yeah, anyways, to unlock the door, all you have to do is just go back here and pull this lever. However, when you go to pull it, you'll get more of just randomly appear of the fourth member in action. <laughs> Pretty awesome. A neat way to introduce the new enemy that you encounter in this bendy. Anyways, so next up here, after playing hide and seek with Heidi in the Gent Workshop and then going through the decontamination process to open up this door to get into this room, in this room there are five different Easter eggs in this one area that I'm going to be showing you all. The first one will be located over here in this display case. There's a sound that you may be familiar with after you hit this camera here. Check this out. This is the sound of the projectionist boss that we have to go up against in Bendy and the Ink Machine. So, yeah, I guess this is what happened to his head after he got it ripped off. Anyways, this next one I wanted to show y'all will be located right over here on the other side of where we could find the projectionist's head. When you pull this lever over here, this will open up the security door on this window where we'll be able to see in. And we'll be able to see someone that some of you may be familiar with. Check this out. So, yeah. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with this character here playing the banjo, this is Sammy Lawrence. You can see his mask on the ground nearby him, which this guy was also a part of Bendy and the Ink Machine. No, don't look at me. Stay away. Pretty neat to see 
these return right at this same area. Anyways, there's some other Easter eggs at the top up here. We just gotta climb this ladder. That's right by this. Gotta say, his banjo is pretty relaxing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, up here we could find some of our old tools from Bendy and the Ink Machine. Such as this tool right here that we use to discover secret things around in the game that we couldn't typically see unless we pulled this up. And we can see the Bendy disc here and the axe that's also from Bendy and the Ink Machine. Pretty cool to see all of these make a return right here in this little display. Too bad we're not able to use these though. Anyways, we can also find another Easter egg over here in this room. Once we open up the shutters, we'll find some writing on the ground that states, Are you worthy to walk with angels? This is referencing Alice Angel and what she said in Bendy and the Ink Machine. Check this out. Anyways, lastly, we could find an Easter egg that references Bertram Piedmont, which he's located right down here. You can find this that you can bust open, and inside of here, you can find Bertram. It's pretty eerie because his eye will follow you. In case you don't know who Bertram is, he's a boss fight in Bendy and the Ink Machine. Bertram was also the creator of the amusement park Bendy Land with the help of Joey Drew Studios. Yeah, he created the amusement park when he was a human. However, he ended up becoming this monster that we had to fight. We never got to see him when he was his normal human form. But yeah, this is where he's at now in the future after the fight. And you know, I guess it does make sense on why we are seeing all these references from the past in this one area because before entering in here Heidi did mention that this is where the ghosts live. That's where the ghosts live. Just beyond that door. The keeper's prison. The pit. No one ever comes out. At least they're never quite the same. So yeah, makes more sense on why we are seeing all these references in this one area. All of them got taken out in some kind of way, and now they're here. Anyways, for this next thing, I'll be showing you all a secret that you could easily miss going through the game. Since we're around this area where we had to play hide and seek with Heidi, I figured I'd show you up at the area where you do discover her at, if you turn around and go through this hallway here, you can meet a giant ink creature named Big Steve. Check this out. And it turns out Steve here is blocking a way to get inside a treasure room. You can actually get him to move by helping him out by getting him some food. We can figure this out by reading the note up here at the top of this place. As you can see here, the note reads, The keepers have taken my friend, locked him away like some animal, just because he's big and strong. But they don't need to fear him, no. If they just make sure to feed him on time, Big Steve won't even hurt a fly. He loves the food from the little devil lounge best. If only someone would take the long road back through the sewers, climb up the elevator shaft, and seek out his favorite thumping delicacy, then they would see how harmless he really is. So yeah, to save some time, I'm not going to be showing me travel all the way back to the lounge, because it's basically at the very beginning. It does take a little while to get all the way back here, but when you do get to this place, to find the food that he wants, it'll be back here in the kitchen. As you can see, it'll be on this skillet. So yeah, anyways, once you got the food, if you return back to him and give him it, here's what will happen. He'll move right out of the way and sit down and start eating what we got him. And now we have access to this treasure room in here. 
which you can find some goodies on the shelf and on the floor near the shelf. And there's a safe and sound box here with a schematic upgrade. So be sure to grab this too. It's definitely worth it to help them out. Anyways, this next little thing that I wanted to show y'all will be in chapter four. You can actually hit Bendy and here's what happens when you do. Yeah, his head spins in a circle with a funny sound effect. But yeah, other than that, nothing happens. Doesn't matter how many times you hit him. Pretty neat little feature the developers decided to add in with Bendy. They knew some players were going to try to attack him. Anyways, this next thing that I wanted to show y'all will be a secret that you can find in the subway. Once you get near the end of the game, where you encounter Betty before going down into Wilson's laboratory, if you head down this way where the subway is located at and head right inside this subway area where it says track 77 you can find a giant bird over here inside the train tunnel yeah check this out guys just a giant bird here with writing underneath it that says just a pencil in a dream which you can find this writing randomly around in other areas too other than that i don't see anything else in here besides a door over there but still Nonetheless, pretty interesting little secret the developers added in that you might have missed. Anyways, this next thing will be a secret that you can trigger over in the city. Once you get the other part of the city unlocked by being able to go through this building here, over here you can actually knock on a door, and if you knock five times, some secret dialogue is triggered. Check this out. So yeah, some funny dialogue you could find that the developers decided to add in over here that you could easily pass up. Anyways, this next secret will be around the very beginning of the game. You'll have to travel back here once you eventually get teleportation. Some of you may remember this writing right here that states, where is the toy man? This might have had you a little curious and well, the toy man is actually right around this vicinity. If you go this way over here and teleport through this little crack right here. Oh, that was a mess up. In here, you can actually find the toy man holding up this bendy right here. As you can see here. <laughs> yeah. That's supposed to be toy man. Pretty neat. And uh, you can pick it up too. And here's what happens when you do. Makes a robotic sound. Also over here, you can find this paper airplane too you could pick up. When you pick it up, you'll get a little animation of Audrey playing with it. And if you go to it in the menu, here's what it says about it. A paper airplane skillfully crafted to carry far on soft wind. This creative toy was cheap to make, but rich in memories. Pretty cool. And also, you do get an achievement too for finding and collecting Toy Man. Alright, so I saved the best for last. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all a secret that you could trigger to make an Easter egg appear in the sky. And how you do this is by breaking all of the pots around in the city here. There's a total of seven at this part of the city, and three more at the other part of the city. So there's a total of ten pots that we have to break. As you see so far, I've broken two. There's a third one. You can find the fourth one right over here. Oh, what the? And the fifth one will be located back here in the farmer's market. And you can find the sixth one right here in this corner. And the seventh one on the other side of this car here. So. Yeah, there's uh, the seven on this side. Oh my gosh. Freaking ghost. Uh, if we head through this building here, we can find the other three that we need. Over here, at this part of the city, you can find one. You can find one in this corner, over here next to this bench. So that's eight now total. 
and find another right here. So that's nine. And lastly, you can find another right here. Now check this out, guys, when we go to look up in the sky. <laughs> it's the moon from Zelda Majora's Mask, which is one of my all-time favorite games. have loads of good memories on that game. That's the reason why I said I saved the best for last, because this just blew me away. It's awesome seeing a Majora's Mask Easter egg. Especially on a newer game like this. But yeah, as soon as you take your eyes off the moon and look back up in the sky, you'll see that the moon goes back to being regular. Either way, still an awesome Easter egg. But yeah, I guess that's all wrapping up this video, everyone. Hope you found this enjoyable and you learned something new about Bendy and the Dark Revival. I'm out of here. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.